Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here, and I am here today with a fantastic product from Dexabel. This is the Dexabel Vivo SX7. And what it is, is it's a standalone sound module that can be used right here on your desktop like I'm doing, or it comes with some ear mounts for a rack mount, so you can put this on your rack. Now this is an ultra cool product which I feel is really underrated at the moment because it does so much stuff. Now if you're familiar with the Dexabel uh, Vivo S3, S7, S1, this has the exact same guts that those models have. It's the exact same sound engine, the same processor, everything is the same. Now they have a couple of new models out. The S3 Pro and the S7 Pro and basically the only difference with that above this is that it has about 30 more sounds that this doesn't have. But the cool thing is you can download those sounds from the Dexabel website and put them on here. And that is the cool thing about this because you can keep adding sounds to this that are not already on it. That is so cool. So rather than start out the usual way i want to start out with the top four things that blew me away with this product now for the four best things let me start out with the first one the first one is a lot of manufacturers including like on this model right here they're getting away from the uh, legacy five pin din midi connections and that's a shame because you can hook those up to anything Instead, they're all using this MIDI over USB. And usually the only way to get any use out of this is to hook this up to a host product like your own personal computer. And that has been a problem, but Dexabel has solved that problem with their new operating system, the Aquaviva. So watch this right now. I'm gonna plug this in. And look, it recognized that as a Casio USB thing. So, that is so cool. What you're hearing is the Vivo Grand, and you know, everybody that's heard this loves this. We've even compared it with other products Kawaii, Nord, a whole bunch of other products. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but they have a new series of pianos out that you can add to this called the Platinum Series. And that's the Japan Platinum, and the German Platinum, and the Italian Platinum, and the USA Platinum. And I think you can pretty much guess by those countries which pianos we're talking about. So anyway, that is the first thing of four that I really love about this product the being able to take a USB controller, any keyboard that has USB output, and put it in here, and you can control it. Any sounds that you want. All right, the second of the four that I found really cool is they've got these long samples. So in your typical keyboard, what you buy, you're going to have samples that are anywhere from about one to five seconds, maybe a little bit longer, but they use extra long samples here. So without getting into a loop, they'll take a, a lower sample over here and it's 15 seconds long before it loops. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's still going. It is so cool. And that really changes the whole perception of how you hear these pianos. All right. So this brings me up to my third feature that just blows me away. You know, a lot of keyboards out there, when you buy them, they have some decent polyphony to them. So you have 128, you've got 192, you've got boards with 256 on the upper end. But they are using this uh, quad-core processor with 320 oscillators, which gives them the ability to boast about virtually unlimited polyphony. That is so cool. 
and this subject is beyond the scope of what I want to cover here. So I'll probably do another video about polyphony so that you'll understand exactly what that means. All right, but check this out. And I'm holding the pedal down, the sustain pedal. Throughout. So if you know about polyphony, you know how fantastic this option is. Uh, now, the fourth major feature that blows me away with this is the ability to download any sounds or instruments that Dexabel puts out, sort of like Nord, you know, free upgrades and the sounds for life. Just go to their website and download it. Dexabel does the same thing but they've gone a step farther. There's sound font format that, you know, it's been around forever. It's called Sound Font 2. So any Sound Font 2 files that you find on the internet and you can get for free or you can pay for them, depending on the quality, it has the ability to add those here. Now I have another video where I was having a lot of fun with Sound Font 2 files that I found on the internet and uh, I've done a video on that. I'm going to put a link in the description so that you can get to that. It's really worth watching to see what I came up with for free and how I, easy it was to put them on here and have fun with them. That is so cool. And I've already touched on the Platinum Sound Library, which I also think is a, it's a must have. All right, now, like I mentioned, it's got the same processor and chip, which is in their other Vivo models, which is really cool. You've got this in this compact portable model. It also has the ability to have audio in the same USB cable that you're carrying the MIDI signals in. And that audio can be 48 kilohertz, 24 bit with 32 bit floating point calculations, which boils down to 256 times the resolution of 16-bit audio. Now, 16-bit audio is CD quality. So imagine 256 times that resolution. Now we've got like 18 different DSP effects. You can use six of those simultaneously. How cool is that? And let me just go through the back panel real quick over here so that you know what you're getting into. So starting on this end and working my way over here, we've starting out with the 12 volts DC in. So you've got the uh, AC adapter that comes with this. One end, of course, plugs into your AC mains and the other plugs into here. After that, you've got a left and a right quarter inch unbalanced output so that you can feed this to your amp or your mixer or your audio interface or whatever. Then you have a left and right XLR outputs and they're balanced. So you can also feed that to a mixer or an amp or an audio interface or what have you. Then you've got quarter inch input for a damper pedal. And this isn't just the on off type of damper pedal, which you can use if you want, but you can get a continuous controller damper pedal. So you can do half damper. So that's really cool too. Next to that is a quarter inch assignable input. And what you would probably use with that is a expression pedal. All right, very cool. Then you've got your MIDI in and through in your standard five pin DIN legacy jacks. And you've got your USB to host. So if you wanna hook this up to a computer, you take your USB cable from there and hook that up to a computer. On the front panel, uh, as you can see, we've got volume, we've got data entry, and we've got headphone jacks, quarter inch, and we've got sound, memory, and menu buttons, which also double for right and exit. Then you've got three soft 
buttons over here so whatever you see that's written above those that's what the function of those buttons would be they also double as a demo so if i press these two end buttons at the same time it goes into demo mode and plays off some of the best selections that they put together all right and then you've got these cursor buttons that'll go right left up and down as you navigate the uh, whatever's on the screen and you got this USB memory so you can plug in a USB thumb drive or whatever into here in this case I am using USB from this controller to here now since I'm doing that, I've kind of given up the capability of putting a USB thumb drive in there, but I found, and it might take some experimentation because I found some of these uh, four port extensions or USB hubs, some work, some don't. This one happens to work. I don't know what brand it is, but you'll play around with it. So basically that USB thumb drive I was talking about that goes into here. I'm going to disconnect my keyboard and put that into here and reconnect it. And you'll see it recognize my keyboard again. And it also knows that I have a USB over here because it just read that in. All right, very cool. <music> Now what you're seeing here is Vivo Grand. That's what you've been hearing me play. Here's a Pop Grand. If you're in a band and you really want to cut through a mix, that Pop Grand is the way to go. And of course you heard the Vivo Grand. And they have a classic grand. And Vivo Live. They recommend this for live performance. But I still love that pop grand for live performance. But look at all these different categories you have. Here's a tone wheel organ. Here's a pop organ. And a reggae organ. Blues organ. Jazz organ. Gospel organ. And an R&B organ. And there's a lot more stuff as you can see when we go through these things. Here's a, a steel guitar. Low strings. Oops. Check out the bass on that. Very rich. Okay. And uh, there's so much stuff here. Nylon guitar. So let me go over some of the other features. Um, if I go over to the sound here, you can see everything. This is just in the piano section. 
So I can go through other sections as well. You've already heard that stuff. Now, what I want to do is I want to go into my menu over here, and these are all the categories that I have with the menu, and there's a lot of them. But basically, I wanted to talk about something right now. Okay, one thing I want to talk about is you're going to see over here there's three different things. I've got a Vivo Grand on one, acoustic bass on two, and a warm pad on three. Now, what this is, is there's three different parts to this. And each part is listening on basically, part one is listening on MIDI channel one. Part two is listening on MIDI channel two. Part three is listening on MIDI channel three. So right now I've got this set for MIDI channel one and it's going to be a Vivo Grand. Now, every keyboard, you can, you can change what channel or MIDI channel that you're transmitting on. In this case, it was channel 1. So let me go ahead and change this to MIDI channel 2. We're going to go into the MIDI menu over here. Keyboard channel, we're on channel 1. Watch what happens when I change to channel 2. There's that acoustic bass that I was talking about. And if I go to channel three, I've got a warm pad. Very cool. And of course, I can change any of these things to be whatever instrument that I want. And let me go back to channel one, the piano. So a lot of keyboards out there, you can configure it so that channel one would be, say, this portion, whatever you want to set that portion up to be, and the middle portion to channel two, and the middle to channel, or the top to channel three. Or you can have three different keyboards daisy chained together. So one keyboard would be for channel one, the other would be for channel two, and the other for channel three. And these are all configurable, each channel over here. This is part one, that's basically channel one. I can control the volume of it. I can control the pan pot. In other words, do I want it to the left, to the right, in the middle, or anywhere in between? I can even change the octaves. I can shift them up or down. I can mute it, so I can turn it off altogether. I got coarse tune and fine tuning, and I can define the range. The low note being here and the high note being here or anywhere I want those to be. And this is all just for part one. So I can change the other two parts to make it anything else that I want. I've got soft keys for part two and part three. So very, very cool. The other thing I want to talk about is this T2L that they're talking about or true to life. Now, we've got a Vivo Grand right here. And if I hit that T2L, these are all the parameters that I can control. If you're familiar with Kawaii and their upper end models, the virtual technician that they have, this is going to be very similar to that when you have a piano model selected. So right now I got the Vivo Grand. I can control the hammer noise and the key off noise and the damper noise and the string resolution, and the damper resolution, as well as the velocity component of that. Okay, now, like I said, when you go to T2L, it's specific to the instrument you've just chosen. So if we go to this acoustic bass and I choose T2L, now I've got different parameters that I can modify. I can modify the attack, the hold, the decay, the sustain, the release, and the velocity component. Well, basically, 
I'm defining the envelope for that. So you get the idea, but as you get into other instruments, these things are all going to change so that you can control certain aspects of that instrument. Very, very, very cool stuff here. So that's what I wanted to talk about today with this. And again, this is such a cool product. You don't need to travel with a keyboard anymore. If you're with a successful touring band and you don't have roadies, or even if you do have roadies, bring this with you. You've got this programmed for every single gig that you can do. Just rent a keyboard, any keyboard that feels good to you, and use this. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. So I hope this has helped you out. And again, I can't say enough good things about this. Again, check the links in the description that I'm going to put in there because those are also going to be really fun to watch. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.